Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Blocks team, and we're extremely excited to bring you a huge update to Generate Blocks in our upcoming 2.0 release. We're going to cover three main things today, including block settings and styling, the overhauled blocks, and a completely new and far more powerful dynamic data system. Of course, there's even more exciting stuff we're going to cover in individual videos over the coming weeks, so make sure you're subscribed for that. We'll start off here on my demo site with Generate Blocks 2.0 and Generate Blocks Pro 2.0 installed. I'm using the alpha version, so some things might change a little bit between now and the full release. And of course, you don't want to use these on a live site, so just use them for exploration and testing for now. Starting off with the thing you're most likely to notice first is we now have this little settings panel for all of the Generate Blocks controls, and these are gonna surface the common things that you would want to do. So in this case, I have a container selected, so the tag name is div by default, but I could easily change this to section right here in, in this portion, or in the shapes, I could go ahead and pop in a shape or bring in a background image using a dynamic tag, which we'll get to in a little bit. Then if I were to go ahead and select my headline element, we can see that we have some similar controls. And then if we select the button, these change pretty dramatically because of course, you're gonna wanna do something different with the button here. We can apply the link or set our tag name from A to button or whatever is relevant for your particular case. So this is nice because it's gonna surface some of the common controls and save you a couple clicks. Now, the biggest change to our block settings and styling is the fact that our local styles now all match our global style controls. So what do I mean? Well, when I click over here to this styles tab, you can see that everything that I can apply directly to this block now matches what you become accustomed to when using a global style prior to now. So everything matches one for one, what you see on this local style in terms of layout, spacing, typography, effects, everything matches just as though you were working inside a global style from before. And just for example sake, if I go ahead and click over here into the global style area, you can see that everything that we just saw on the local side now matches on the global side as well. Another huge change we're super excited about is this search functionality here. So if you know the name of the control or even part of the name of what you're looking for, you can type that in. So if I just type in the word color, for example, I'm presented with the various color pickers, such as this border, text color, and our background color here as well. Now these are fuzzy search as well. So if you only have a partial match like text and then the letter C, I'm presented just with the text color because that's the closest match in this case. And it gets even better because I could type in text color and shadow, for example, and I can see that the various controls for text color and shadow, which in this case presents both box shadow and text shadow, appear there. So this is really awesome and really powerful. I already find myself using this search as the primary way for me to get around the controls. Now every sub control works as well. So if I know that I want gap, for example, it's gonna filter down to the layout section and the alignment area, which is where our column and row gap are going to exist. So this is super, super awesome and a massive time saver. There's a couple more awesome things that we've introduced in terms of the block settings and styling. So if I click this little reset search button, I can select this little dialogue right here. And in this controls visibility window, I'm gonna say hide empty controls. And what that's gonna do is show us only the things that have been modified, in this case, on this particular global style. But if we were on a local style, for example, it's gonna show only the things that have been modified. So if we come back to show all, come down to typography and let's set the font size to something like four rim, then when we go back to the hide empty controls, we're only going to see the things that exist that we've actually modified up to now. So this is super, super awesome. The other thing you probably noticed in this controls visibility window is this show inherited values option. So to best demonstrate, let's first keep in mind that we're working in a global style right now and we have the text color set to blue. If we go back to our local styles, we change this to show inherited values, what we're gonna see is that we're not actually applying the color or the font size on this local style, but it's giving us an indication of where that's coming from. So in this case, we can see that there's a global style called text alt. And just like before, if I click this little pencil, it's gonna take me to where it actually exists. And what it does is automatically fill in the search and brings me right to the correct global style. So if I needed to modify the color, for example, I could go ahead and do that. As you can see, these matching global and local style controls along with the search and kind of these filtering controls is gonna bring a whole new level of just speed and efficiency to your workflow. So we're super excited about that. The next major thing I wanna show you is the overhauled blocks now in Generate Blocks 2.0. Under the hood, the team has spent a ton of time and energy making these blocks even more performance focused than they already were and expanding the capabilities of many of these blocks. 
As you can see here in my document overview, we have both a headline and a text block now, which are actually just the same block under the hood, but it gives us a bit more flexibility so that if we want to simply just add a text block, we can go ahead and do that without having to add a headline and switch the tag. But of course, if you had a text element, and you wanted to change it back to a headline, we could simply just set the tag to whatever we need. Maybe in this case, it would be an H3 or vice versa. If you wanted to switch this to a paragraph tag, you can go ahead and do that. It's worth noting that all of your old blocks are going to be unaffected. So even upgrading to generate blocks 2.0, you're gonna have no problems whatsoever. The next major overhaul we are really excited to bring you is the query loop block, which is now just called query. So switching over here from our styles tab to our settings tab, you're gonna find all the various parameters that you're familiar with, such as what kind of query you're after, what post type, post per page, and all those sorts of parameters you're familiar with. And if we expand this query, we can see that a little bit has changed. So inside the looper, we're no longer relying on the old grid element. So we have total flexibility here. You can see I've added a global style for some gap here, but we can do anything we need to, add more global styles, adjust the local styles of this looper, and this is the outer wrapper of all items inside this query. Then of course we can go a step deeper for the individual loop items. So for example, if we wanted to add some spacing to all of them, we could just simply add you know, one rim of padding to all those elements, just as you'd expect. So this gives you a ton of flexibility. The other big changes is we also have the container down here, which is gonna hold your pagination. So it's a lot easier to modify the styling and control of these page numbers. If we change to the settings tab, you can see the midsize, tag names, all the controls you would need to work with your pagination here are just built right in. Then of course, we also have a control here for no results. So you can customize how this looks when there are no results found. So it was some really nice quality of life features, but it gets even better than that. In Generate Blocks Pro 2.0 and later, we can now do more with the query itself. So instead of just being able to query posts, we can also grab values from post metas, such as ACF relationship fields or ACF repeaters, as well as values from ACF options pages. So if we take a look down at the bottom of my page, I have an ACF relationship field that is basically bringing in other posts around my site. So these are three posts that exist. And what I would wanna do in this example would be just show some related posts that I can pick from. So not based on taxonomy or any kind of other identifier like that. I just wanna be able to go through my posts and pick specifically which ones should appear here. Then what I could do in my query, of course, is change my query type to post meta. Then we would set our meta key to related posts, which we can see appear right here, ACF fields. So we'll pop that in. And of course we can see right here, it's automatically bringing everything in, our post title, image, date, all that metadata is just dropped right in automatically for us, even though we're querying a relationship field and not a regular WP query. In this case, I had the per page set to three. So if I just increase it to four, we'll see that fourth result returned in just a moment. And there's that fourth related item. So this would be a really great way to build a customized related post sidebar in your template, for example. But there's a ton of ways to use ACF repeaters and relationship fields that we'll cover in future videos. The next major thing I wanna to touch on here is our dynamic data overhaul. So what we can do now is clicking on any generate blocks element, we can open this little dialogue here for dynamic tags. So what we can do is pick from a variety of tags, just like you're familiar with before. We can go ahead and pick our tag here from all the various options, including custom meta fields. And let's just say, for example, in this case, we wanna bring in our post title. It'll ask us a couple of other questions and we can go ahead and just drop that tag right into the page. Now, the reason why this tag system is so much better than before is because we can actually edit this to include more than one tag in any individual element, or we can add our own content. So we could add some text like, you know, read this post. And then when we switch this tag back to the preview mode, we can see that our text we manually typed in shows up right before the dynamic tag of this page's title in this case. Now, this same exact system is what's happening down here in the query loop. We can select any of these items to see how the dynamic tag is working. So if we choose this headline, same thing, it's just gonna bring in the post title. And in this case, it's activating the link to post. And that was just here in this dynamic tag section. All we did was just change the link to post in this case. Then if we were to go back to this dynamic tag section, we can insert another tag here. So we're not limited to just one dynamic tag per element. We can add as many as we want here. There's so much ground for us to cover that we really can't fit it all into this one video. Overall, we are extremely excited to get you hands-on with these exciting changes, and we hope that you love Generate Blocks 2.0 as much as we do. 
Make sure you're subscribed here on the channel for more great tutorials and deep dives into this latest update. And if you don't already own Generate Blocks, be sure to click the link in the description to learn more. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one.